There's been a lot of misinformation about Livewire One battery packs recently in different videos and things that I've read. So tonight I want to cl clear up the situation and tell you exactly what the truth is about the Livewire One battery pack. It's basically 2017 technology that was introduced in 2019 and is still unchanged in 2023, uh, yet it still outperforms all other current electric motorcycle battery packs. Um, we're going to talk about the good news. There's a picture of the battery pack on a crate, but it's a completely different technology than any other battery pack from any other electric motorcycle. It's proven to be 100% safe and reliable and does not have any, degra any degradation. And as far as I know, uh, no one has ever had to replace a LiveWire 1 battery pack. They're 100% reliable. Uh, not only that, but they tolerate continuous DC fast charging and rapid discharging. So you can ride the motorcycle hard, you can pull it up to a fast charger, you can charge, you can keep riding hard all day long. There's no problem. There's no thermal issues. And uh, lastly, uh, I'm going to show information and spec sheets that uh, prove that the Livewire 1 battery pack can actually go 460,000 miles before we'll experience any loss of range. So that's how it's designed, and we're going to show the spec sheets and show that works. But basically, the battery pack is going to way outlast the motorcycle. Now, there is a little bit of bad news with all this good news. And the bad news is, is that the battery pack is expensive, and it's a single source supplier. Now, what I mean by that is it's Samsung SDI. They are the ones that make the battery pack. They're the only source for the prismatic batteries that uh, the Livewire One uses. And we're going to talk about that in a moment, but it's expensive and it's a single source supplier. I think one of the reasons that uh, Livewire moved to the uh, cylindrical batteries uh, for the Del Mar is that they were concerned that they didn't have the flexibility if technology changes, etc., to be able to jump from supplier to supplier, have more than one source for batteries if they continued with the prismatic battery pack that the Livewire One has. Now, talking about battery packs, there's three different battery technologies. There's what's called the pouch cell. Uh, that's what's used on the Zero SRF and Zero SRS. It basically looks like a little pouch. It's the same technology that's been used in the Nissan Leaf and the Chevrolet Volt. Uh, it's what Zero uses. I'm not going to get too far in the weeds about why they use it, but that's what they chose. In terms of uh, cylindrical batteries, which are the, the little round cells that kind of look like you know little flashlight batteries, they're being used by Energica, and they're also being used in the new Livewire Del Mar, uh, they're best known because they're used in the Tesla uh, Model S and X and most of the Model 3s and Ys, although there's a few changes lately. But this is uh, the type of battery that's being used in those vehicles. And then prismatic cell batteries. That's what's used in the Livewire 1. Uh, it's also used in the BMW. The BMW i3, the battery pack is very, very similar uh, to what's in the Livewire 1, but it's also used in the Volkswagen ID4, the Kia, the Jaguar, the Rivian, and several other mass market uh, electric vehicles. Now, why did Harley Davidson Livewire choose the prismatic battery? Uh, there's at least four reasons. First of all, it's space efficiency. These batteries are little rectangles, so you, they can be stacked closely together, which allows for a larger battery capacity in a smaller space. The Livewire One motorcycle is not that large a motorcycle, and one of the reasons they can get away with it is the packaging for the batteries is smaller. And then number two, thermal management, which I believe is probably the biggest win for the Livewire One, is that the rectangular shape allows for better thermal management. They have a larger surface area, which allows you to dissipate heat, heat better, which prevents overheating and improves the lifespan of the battery. So, like I said before, you can ride the bike hard, you can fast charge it, keep riding hard all day long on a hot day, and it just keeps going. And then safety. Uh, typically, uh, cylindrical batteries, uh, due to their shape, um, are, are more pr prone to swelling and deformation than a prismatic battery. So this helps prevent battery failures and fires. And then the prismatic battery also has higher output. It, can high, it has a higher discharge rate than cylindrical batteries, which means it can deliver more power to the motor. Now, 
the first thing I want to talk about is that the uh, the live wire battery pack is 100% uh, safe and reliable with no degradation. Now I'm on you know a lot of the social media groups, the Facebook groups. I know a lot of live wire owners. I'm not aware of anyone that has battery degradation or has has had to replace a battery pack. Now these three people I believe are the highest mileage. Live, live wire one owners. We've got Diego on the left. Everybody knows Diego. He's got a 2019 Harley Davidson live wire. He's got 40,000 plus miles on that thing. He did a cannonball run with it. He is a high mileage rider. When he charges up his bike, he got he gets exactly uh, the same range that the rest of us do, almost to the mile. Then my son Preston in the middle. He's got a 2021 live wire one. Uh, 25,000 miles on it. The interesting thing about him is he doesn't have access to a plug where he lives, uh, so he's 95% fast charging all the time. No problem, and he also, uh, when he gets home at night, I can notice from watching the app that he leaves the battery dead sometimes, or almost dead, and doesn't even charge up to the next day. He's still having no battery issues. And then myself, I've got a 2022 LiveWire 1 with 9,700 miles on it. I got it last July. I ride it uh, back and forth to work and use it for canyon riding. But three of us, the uh, as far as I know, uh, the highest mileage live wire owners, we are having no problem. As far as I know, nobody else is having any battery problems either. There are occasionally some problems with the bike charging with some of the fast chargers need an update or something like that to make it work. But in terms of the battery, absolutely no problem. Now, the Achilles heel of batteries is uh, the heat problem, th the thermal issues. Not necessarily always a fire, but the battery is getting too hot to be able to charge or to be able to output full power. Now, Livewire solved this problem in 2019. When I say that, the 2019 Livewire does not have any thermal issues and can fast charge and run hard all day with no problem. Uh, that's been the way it's been from the start. Absolutely nailed the battery, no problem, it works perfectly. Uh, Energica in 2022 may have solved the problem. I'm not sure yet, but I, they've uh, done a little bit different thing with their battery packs. They use the uh, cylindrical battery packs with a coolant, I believe, in, in the new ones. And I think that they can go relatively well, fast charging and riding all day. I, I'm not 100% sure yet, but it looks like in the new technology, uh, they've been able to solve that problem and pull it off. Now, Zero, Ducati, Triumph, and everyone else, they have never solved this problem. Ducati just came out recently and said that they're not going to do electric motorcycles because they don't think the technology is right. Well, yeah, uh, it's not right for them because they haven't figured it out. And they've got another problem in that the Energica motorcycles were uh, faster on, on, the, on the Moto E on the same tracks than the Ducatis are. So they've got a problem not only with the batteries, but their motorcycles aren't as fast as the Energica. And then I, I think what the situation is and the reason there's a lot of problems with uh, battery packs and motorcycles is you just can't put a battery in a motor on a motorcycle and have it work. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of engineering. It takes millions of dollars. And it's not easily solved. So when you see people like Ducati and Triumph and all these other guys jumping into the business, to have a battery that can charge quickly and, uh, and, and the motorcycle handles well and be able to ride the bike hard, that's just not something that everybody can do. As far as I know, uh, Livewire can do it. Uh, Energica can probably do it with their newer models. But it's, uh, it's, it's a big thing. I mean, it's been an issue right from the start for everyone but Livewire. Now... Lastly, I want to talk about the range of the Livewire uh, motorcycle battery pack. They call it the RESS, which stands for Rechargeable Energy Storage System. But uh, if you look at the spec sheet uh, for the uh, battery pack or for the cell that's being used in the battery pack, I've got the arrow there, but it's basically uh, 4,600 cycles between 0 and 100% before the battery loses 20% of its capacity and can only charge to 80. Now that is uh, a giant number of cycles. Um, now in the case of the Harley-Davidson Livewire and the Livewire 1, it is software limited, meaning that uh, when you ride the bike, when you have it fully charged up and ride it, you still have regen. So obviously uh, the battery is not charging up to 100. It's charging up to something less than 100, 
probably 80, probably charging up to 80. So when it shows 100, the maximum you can really charge is to 80. On the same token, the Livewire is the only motorcycle I know of where you can run it full power all the way down to zero and it still works. The zero and the Energica, they go into a limp mode, turtle mode, whatever they call it, and you and you know part of the range on the bottom end is not at, at the same performance level. The zero can't even maintain highway speed. So um, obviously, live wire is not draining the battery to the bottom. It's probably going to about 10 percent, which is kind of interesting because if you take the old BMW i3 battery pack. It was 22 kilowatts. It's the same size, same manufacturer as the live wires. I mean, it's the same SDI pack, basically, pretty close to the same. And you take off 20% at the top and 10% at the bottom, you get 15.7. So uh, live wire advertises 15.5 usable. But I think what's happening there is a software limited. So assuming that you can go 100 miles on each charge with a live wire, and assuming that you go 4,600 full cycles uh, before the battery gets down to 20% off the top, uh, what you wind up with is 460,000 miles, which is way longer than the rest of the motorcycle could ever last. I'm sure the forks would fall off and the bearings be gone, everything else would be gone by the time you got to that kind of mileage. Now, if you think that I'm joking or you want to check this out for yourself, I put the web address on there so you can type it in, you can look at all the specifications. Uh, for what these cells were in 2017, which is when uh, they came out and when they were delivered to Livewire to be part of the Livewire motorcycle. So this is really, you know, a, a, a big thing. I mean, these batteries are going to last a long time, and they're already lasting a long time. Now, there is a little bit of sad news in regard to this battery pack, and the sad news is, is that Livewire discontinued development on the Livewire 1 three years ago. So that's including the battery pack. Uh, the aero architecture is the future for Livewire. That's what they've decided their future is. So they've come up with a, with a different architecture for the motorcycle called the aero architecture, which you've probably heard about uh, the first motorcycle that's supposed to come out later on this year would be the Del Mar that has a, that architecture. But there's no refresh for the Livewire 1 because Livewire is focusing on the aero architecture. I think the reason they decided to do that is the Livewire 1 was too expensive to build. Uh, they didn't want to rely on a single vendor for the, uh, for the battery te technology. They wanted to be able to uh, choose different technologies and different types of batteries as they go along to give them flexibility. If they only use Samsung SDI, they'd have a harder time doing that. And of course, the Livewire 1 doesn't have any shared parts with other models, other, other motorcycles in the line, whereas the uh, aero architecture is going to be shared between models. So it's, it's, it's pretty much you know, the end of the road for the uh, Livewire 1 in terms of you know, what it's going to be because the future is aero. But uh, they, they do have the battery pack thing figured out. It's been figured out from the start. And of course, the uh, Livewire 1 is just a vent a fantastic motorcycle. It's such a fantastic motorcycle uh, that I call it the uh, motorcycle of the century. I think that future generations will look back to 2010 when Harley-Davidson began their electric motorcycle program under the tutelage of Jochen Zeitz. Uh, engineers and designers like Van Strader and Ben McGinley uh, started with a clean slate and created a truly remarkable motorcycle that points the way to a better future for all of us. So uh, Godspeed to the uh, people at Livewire and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, the uh, aero architecture and uh, the Del Mar that I uh, should have before the end of the year. So uh, have a great evening.